Greetings and welcome to this lesson on equations and inequalities involving absolute values. I'm your presenter, Lynn Mann. We're going to focus on two objectives for this lesson. We're going to look at solving equations involving absolute values, and we're going to solve inequalities involving absolute values. Starting with the definition of absolute value, the absolute value of a value if our value, let's say a, is greater than or equal to zero, then the absolute value, and that's what those two up and down straight lines are, straight line a, straight line, that means absolute value. So the absolute value of a when a is positive is a. When a is negative inside those absolute values, then the absolute value of a is negative a or the opposite of a. Let me give you an example. The absolute value of two is two. Okay, so the absolute value of two equals two. The absolute value of negative two equals the opposite of negative two and the opposite of negative two is positive two. All the absolute value does is tells us how far away is that thing away from zero. So two is two units away from zero, and negative two is two units away from zero. Now let's talk about, we're gonna be getting into solving algebraic expressions that have absolute value surrounding them. And so the process we're going to do is, first we're gonna take our u, and if it equals a, then we'll take off the absolute value markers and just leave it equal to a. And then we'll also take off the absolute value markers and make it equal the opposite of a. Now it's very similar to that example I gave you of let's just say u is two. The absolute value of two is two. But what if the u was negative? Well, then the absolute value of negative two is the opposite of negative two, which is two. So that's why we have this negative a out here. Now, if our absolute value of u equals a negative a, assuming that a was a positive number, so this looks like now negative three, then there's no solution. There is no solution that we can put inside u to make that happen. Because remember, the absolute value is only measuring how many units away from zero. And those units are always in the form of a positive value. So there would be no solution there. Let's try a couple of examples. For A, we have the absolute value of x plus 3 equals 0. And then for B, let's do the absolute value of 2x minus 3 minus 5 equals 8. Now the first thing we want to do is, well, the first one only has one solution, right? Because it equals zero. And if I was setting this up entirely, I would have to say x plus three equals zero and x plus three equals the opposite of zero. But the opposite of zero is still zero. So we only have one solution is where u equals zero if we remove the absolute value markers, we get x plus three equals zero. And now we're gonna solve just like we normally would and we get x equals negative three. Now let's just try it out. Let's plug this back in, the negative three, back into our original problem. Negative three plus three is zero. The absolute value of zero is zero and zero equals zero, check mark. We did good there. Let's try our second problem. The absolute value of 2x minus 3 minus 5 equals 8. Now the first thing I want to do is I do want to isolate this absolute value. I need to get rid of this plus 5 first so the absolute value is on its own little side. Now I get have 2x minus 3, the absolute value, equals 13. Now I have two options here. I'm going to end up having 2x minus 3 equals 13, and 2x minus 3 equals the opposite of 13, aka negative 13. So there's two problems when I remove this absolute value. 
So the first one gives us add 3 to both sides, we get 2x equals 16, and dividing by 2 we get x equals 8. The next problem is where we take the negative version of our answer, 2x minus 3 equals negative 13, add 3 to both sides, 2x equals negative 10, and add divide by 2, x equals negative 5. Now let's plug in both of these answers and check our solution. Now, 8. 2 times 8 is 16. 16 minus 3 is 13. The absolute value of 13 is 13. 13 minus 5 is 8. Check. We're good there. Let's try negative 5. Negative 5 times 2, or 2 times negative 5, is negative 10. Negative 10 minus 3 is negative 13, but the absolute value of negative 13 is 13. Positive 13. Positive 13 minus 5 is 8. So yes, both of those answers are good answers. When we have an equation where both sides have an absolute value, we're still going to treat that right-hand side like, let's just remove it where it's the positive version and then take the opposite version, but it's of the whole entire side. So we do have, want to be careful. Ultimately, this will become x minus 1 equals x plus 5, and then we'll have x minus 1 equals the negative of x plus 5, and we will try and find a solution. Once we do this, this is just removing the absolute value on each side. We get x minus 1 equals x plus 5. Subtracting x from both sides, we get negative 1 equals 5. That's false. There is no value that I can plug in for x to force that to be true. Now let's look at the other side. Taking the opposite of whatever is there, I get x minus 1 minus x minus 5. Add x to both sides, I get 2. Add 1 to both sides, I get negative 4. 2 divided by negative 4, 2 divided into negative 4 is negative 2. So we actually have a solution. Let's check. I'm going to plug in negative 2. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. The absolute value of negative 3 is 3. Negative 2 plus 5 is 3. The absolute value of 3 is 3, and 3 equals 3. That is a good solution. So we only have one value. That is our solution. Let's look at another example. The absolute value of 2x minus 1 equals x plus 5. Now what I'm going to do is when I remove the absolute value markers, I'm going to set the right hand side to the positive version of what's there, and I'm going to set the right hand side to the negative version that is there. So here's my positive version, here's my negative version, and the absolute value markers just come off on the left. So I get 2x minus 1 equals x plus 5, and solving that guy, I get 2x equals x plus 6, let's move the x over, and I get x equals 6. For the other version, the negative version, I get 2x minus 1 equals negative x plus 5. Distributing the negative, I get x, 2x minus 1 equals negative x minus 5. And solving for x, I get negative 4 thirds. Let's check both of these answers. By plugging in a 6, I get 2 times 6 minus 1. Well, 2 times 6 is 12 minus 1 is 11. And on the other hand, I get 6 plus 5 is 11. And indeed, 11 equals 11. Let's try our second option for our answer, which is negative 4 thirds. 2 times negative 4 thirds is negative 8 thirds. Negative 8 thirds and negative 8 eighths or 8 uh, 3 thirds, that's negative 11 thirds, and the absolute value of negative 11 thirds is 11 thirds. 
negative four thirds plus five. Well, five could be written as 15 over three and 15 minus four is 11. So it looks like that also works out to check. It is a check. So let's go over some rules about solving absolute value inequalities. If a is greater than zero and u is an algebraic expression, then what we're going to get is the u is going to be between negative a and a. Remember, this is, you can think of it as still breaking it apart as u is less than a, and then multiply both sides by a negative, you get u is greater, you have to flip the sign, than negative a. So if a is a positive value, greater than zero, then to remove those absolute value markers, you're gonna set u in between the negative version of a and the positive version of a. If u is less than or equal to a, then the only thing that changes is the symbols. So instead of just less than, it's less than or equal to. If u is greater than a, then it's gonna be an R or situation. u is either less than negative a, the opposite of a, or u is greater than a. So remember, one of them, we just remove the absolute value markers and we end up with u is greater than a. u is greater than a, just remove them. And then the second version is u something negative a, but because we're multiplying it by a negative one, we have to flip the symbol. Just like we did in our last lesson about uh, our inequalities, anytime that we multiply or divide by a negative value, we flip the symbol. And then if it is greater than or equal to a, then again, if we just remove the absolute value markers, it's gonna be u is greater than or equal to a. But then u is less than or equal to negative a. So we have both of these situations when we have an inequality. Let's take a look at a problem we have using inequalities and absolute values. The absolute value of 4x minus 1 is less than or equal to 9. And if it helps you, we're going to put this value in between negative 9 and positive 9. We fall under the first, well, we fall under the second rule. So we are in a situation where it is less than or equal to 9. So we're going to place our value inside the absolute value between negative 9 and positive 9. Okay, so now that we've removed our absolute value markers and we've placed it in between negative 9 and positive 9, from here on out, we just solve like we normally would. I'm going to add one to all three sections, all three sides. So plus one, plus one, plus one. And we get negative eight is less than or equal to four X is less than or equal to 10. Now I'm going to divide everybody by four. And we get negative two is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to five halves. So as long as our x value is in between negative 2 and 5 halves, this inequality will hold true. Now, I'm just going to pick one of the values that are in between here. I'm going to pre I'm going to say uh, let's let x be 1. 1 is definitely in between negative 2 and uh, 5 halves. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. The absolute value of three is three, and three is less than or equal to nine. That checks. Now, I'm gonna pick a value that's not inside here. Let's pick negative three. So negative three is over here, it's not inside our value range. Four times negative three is negative 12. Negative 12 minus one is negative 13. The absolute value of negative 13 is 13. 
and 13 is not less or equal than nine. So our range, you always wanna do a check. Check a value, you don't have to check them all because there's infinitely many, but you do wanna check your values to make sure that your solution holds. All right, now that we checked our solution is indeed our true solution, here is our solution set. X such that, not to be confused with an absolute value marker, X such that negative two is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to five halves. It's a set notation. The closed interval notation is bracket negative two comma five halves bracket. And graphically, on a number line, we go from negative two, including with a bracket, all the way up to five halves with a bracket and everything in between. Let's take a look at a real world problem that we can use absolute values to set up and then solve using our absolute value rules. We want to find the possible search range in miles for a search plane that has 30 gallons of fuel and uses 10 gallons of fuel per hour. The search plane normally averages 110 miles per hour, but that depends on weather conditions and the weather conditions could affect the average speed as much as 15 miles per hour, either slower or faster. How do we find the possible search range? So here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to find the actual speed in miles per hour when we know the actual speed is within 15 miles per hour of the average speed, which is 110 miles per hour. Okay. That is the actual speed minus the average speed, the absolute value of that is going to be less than or equal to 15 miles per hour. Now, the reason why we need this is because distance is rate times time. In other words, speed times time. Now, our actual speed, we don't know. That's the speed that we wanna find. Minus 110 is gonna be less than or equal to this 15. We're in that second rule of our absolute value. So let's break it apart where we're negative 15 is less than or equal to X minus 110 is less than or equal to 15. Now to solve this problem, I'm going to add 110 on the right in the middle, I should say on the left, on the middle and on the right. And by doing that, we know the actual speed of the plane is somewhere in between 95 and 125 miles per hour. That's the actual speed. Now, how much time does the plane have? We know the plane has 30 gallons of fuel and it averages 10 gallons per average. So 30 divided by 10 is three. So we know that the fuel consumption that the plane can pretty much fly for three hours. Now, miles in search for the plane is going to be three hours times our rate of speed. Okay, multiplying three to both the left, the right, and the middle, left, middle, and right, we get three times 95 is less than or equal to three X is less than or equal to three times 25. Now we're talking about miles. Our search plane has a range of 285 miles to 375 miles. All right, let's take, a, take another look at an example. We wanna solve the inequality of the absolute value of two X minus eight is greater than or equal to four and we're gonna graph the solution set. Now looking at that symbol, greater than or equal to, we're in rule number four of the absolute value. And in rule number four, it tells me one of my options is just to remove the absolute value. And I'll have two X minus eight is greater than or equal to four. My second option is I'm going to take the negative of the right hand side and flip the inequality symbol. So those are my two 
options in this case. So rule four applies. And our first option is take the absolute value markers off, flip the sign, and give a negative to everything on the right. Our second option is just remove the, sim the, the absolute value and everything else stays the same. Now working through these problems, adding eight to both sides from here on out, I'm following all of my inequality rules. If I do have to multiply or divide by a negative, you bet your bottom dollar, I'm gonna flip that sign once again. So adding eight and dividing by a positive two, no flipping of the symbol. I get X is less than or equal to two. For the other option, I'm going to add eight to both sides and divide by two, and I get X is greater than or equal to six. This is an or situation, and more than likely, when you have an or situation, you are going to have a graph where one is pointing to the right and one is pointing to the left. It's this type of situation. An and is where they overlap. An or is usually they're pointing in opposite directions, usually. It's not always the case, but usually. Okay, so our solution set is x such that x is less than or equal to two or x is greater than or equal to six. Since two and six are included, we're going to use brackets. Just like the arrow states for the two, it is pointing to the left. For the six, it is pointing to the right. Now it does seem like every time we learn something new, there are some special cases that we need to consider. With absolute values, there's special cases here as well. And let's just work through them. The special cases are very similar to the special cases that inequalities have anyway. The special cases, cases are that no x value will make it true, and the other special case is where any x value will make it true. So those are the two special cases. We'll see them here as well, but let's work through these absolute value inequalities. Looking at A, we have the absolute value of 3x minus 2 is greater than negative 5. Okay. And the second one is the absolute value of x, uh, 5x plus 3 is less than or equal to negative 2. Now before I work this out, looking at this problem, you could save yourself a lot of time, effort, and energy if you just look at the problem. For A, when will an absolute value be greater than a negative five? Well, the absolute value of anything inside here is positive. And a positive number is always going to be greater than a negative five. So it does not matter what you put in X. I don't even have to do any math. I just have to know what I'm looking at. That is a positive number is always greater than a negative number. It does not matter. You could put a huge negative number in here. I'm going to choose X is negative 100. Negative 100 times 3 is negative 300. Negative 300 minus 2 is negative 302. But I'm still taking the absolute value of that, and I end up with positive 302. This value is always going to be positive, so X will be anything it wants to be. It's all real numbers. Now, let's look at case B. Let's look at, at a general sense. When will an absolute value be less than or equal to a negative number? It never will. This is always positive. I mean, the smallest positive number that I can have, and it's not really positive, it's a transition number, is zero. Let's put zero there. Zero is not less than or equal to two. So there is no value that I can put in for x that any absolute value will be less than a negative number. I don't have to do any math, I just have to look at the problem. So b is the empty set. 
There is no real number that you can put here that will force this absolute value to be less than a negative two. Empty set. Let's tackle a little more difficult problem where we have the absolute value on the left and the right. Now, according to our rules, looking at our inequality symbol, we have a less than. That means we are in rule number one situation when we have less than. So what we're going to do is first isolate our, our absolute values. So I want to get them all on one side. And then we will break the problem up according to rule number one. So I'm going to divide each side by this x, the absolute value of x minus 1. I want to get this onto the left-hand side. Now that I have the absolute value of x plus 1 over the x, absolute value of x minus 1, the good news is because I have an absolute in the absolute value in the numerator and the absolute value in the denominator, I can do the whole entire side as an absolute value. Now we can break it apart into two problems using our rule 1, meaning this is going to be negative 3 is less than x plus 1 over x minus 1 is less than 3. And ultimately, I'm going to have two problems to solve. I would recommend going ahead and breaking them apart and solving them separately, but that's up to you. If you want to try and solve these one fell swoop, but I would say for this instinct, it, this situation, because of the way that we solve for absolute values, break it apart. Now to solve for absolute, uh, sorry, to solve for inequalities, I want to set it equal to zero. So I want to get this negative three off the right hand side and set that equal to zero. And I'm going to set the three side, the right hand side over here to zero. So I'm going to have to get rid of this three. So I'll do this one at a time. First thing, let's add 3 to the left and 3 to the right. I want my right hand side to be one fraction. Yes, that means I have to find common denominator and turn this into one fraction. Once I do that, I can do some simplification and I ultimately get 2x minus 1 all over x minus 1 is greater than 0. I've just flipped it over so I can tell that my fraction is a positive value. Remember, we're going to do some test points and we're going to see where is it negative and where is it positive. Now I will say it's a little bit, I don't want to say of a tricky thing, but you don't have to, when I factored out the 2, I ended up dividing the left by 2 and the right by 2. 0 divided by 2 is 0. So it's just a very cool trick to get rid of this 2 that's not necessary, not hanging around. I'm going to do that same trick for this version on the right. First things first, I got to move this 3 over, set it equal to 0. Find common denominator. So the denominator is going to be x minus 1. Multiply the 3 by x minus 1 in the bottom, combine them. Distribute the negative 3 and then factor out 2, negative 2. I'm going to multi 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 multiply the right hand side and the left hand side by a negative 1 half. When I multiply by the negative, I've got to switch this symbol. Now that I have my two problems, I'm going to have to do some test points. That's the only way I'm going to know where are both of these values greater than zero, the both of these fractions greater than zero. OK, so when we find our test points, we end up looking at the denominator is 1. We're not in going to include 1 because 1 will force the denominator to be 0. And in fact, the critical point for the 1 fraction is actually another critical point for the other fraction. So 1 is definitely a critical point. Solving the numerator, setting it equal to 0, and finding the critical point here, 
we get x equals 1 half. Now because it's greater than 0, we are not going to include it. Doing some test points, we find everything to the left of 1 half is a positive value. Everything to the right of 1 is positive. So the first set has the solution of negative infinity to, to 1 half union with 1 to infinity. Doing the same type of thing, we get x minus 2 in our numerator and x minus 1 in our denominator. Since it's strictly greater than, we're looking for positive values. When x is 1, we plug in values in our region to the left of 1, and we find, let's say, 0. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. But a negative 2 over a negative 1 is positive. So all these values in this region are going to be positive. We would test a point in between 1 and 2. So I'm just going to test 1 half. 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. Oh, I need something in between 1 and 2, and I'm picking 1 half. Uh, 1.5. 1 1.5 1 minus 1 is positive 0. 0.5. But 1 half, 1.5 minus 2 is is negative 0.5 and therefore that's a negative number. There are all negative numbers in between here. Now I'm going to test a point to the right of my critical value of 2 and I'm just going to pick 4. 4 minus 2 is 2, 4 minus 1 is 3, that is a positive value 4 over 3, uh, 2 over 3. That is a positive value and therefore I know everything to the right of our critical value of 2 is positive. So our solution is negative infinity to 1 but not including 1 and 2 not including 2 all the way up to positive infinity. Now keeping in mind that these solutions are for the individual parts of the problem. We have to come up with a solution that fits the whole entire problem, meaning whatever solutions fit for the 2x minus 1 all over x minus 1 is greater than 0 and also meets the criteria of x minus 2 all over x minus 1 is greater than 0. You'll see here that 2 is included in the first situation. But 1, this little range, right? Let me get my little pointer. 2 and everything above it is included in the first situation. The problem comes with this region right here. From 1 to 2 is not included in the second version of the problem. So we're going to have to ultimately cut this part out. Additionally, we have a little bit of uh, wiggle room from 1 to 1 half is not included in the second version. So we're going to have to cut that part out. We'll ultimately cut out all of that part. Let me get in highlighter. All of this part to meet the criteria of both equations at the same time. So the solution to the whole entire problem is what both of them are true. And therefore, from 1 half all the way down to negative infinity, not including 1 half, and 2 all the way up to positive infinity is our ultimate solution to the original problem. All right, that's it for this lesson. Fairly quick lesson. Um, if you have any questions, contact me. Otherwise, be seeing you.